Sir Robert Anderson's book. Uh, in his book, he claims that 445 BC is the correct date by asserting that the interval days, this is kind of important for, for him, the interval, interval days from the issuing of the decree to the Sunday that Jesus rode in on a donkey into Jerusalem is exactly to the very day, 173,880 days. Here's where he uh, says that, the interval contained exactly and to the very day, 173,880 days, or seven times 69 prophetic years of 360 days each. The first 69 weeks of Gabriel's prophecy in Daniel 9. Gabriel was the angel that brought this prophecy to Daniel. So let's look and see how Sir Robert Anderson calculates the interval of 173,880 days. Now, this is going to get a little bit, um, should I say, not complicated, but there'll be a lot of different numbers here. So kind of uh, pay attention, and you may have to go back over this here to, to follow all this, but I'm going to, I've tried my best to uh, simplify it and make it graphical so you can see what it is. But the key thing is here is this exact number of days from the start of the decree in 445 BC until Jesus rides into Jerusalem on a donkey is exactly 173,880 days. That's the claim for this uh, prophetic understanding. So a prophecy with two errors. So we read in chapter uh, six here, uh, let, me, let me read this here real quickly for you. The prophetic error is divided into two periods. The one of seven plus 62 years, that's uh, hepatites, is uh, means seven year periods. And the other of a single hepatite, or last seven years. The first error closes at the end of the 69 week, the 480 uh, third year with the cutting off of Messiah, the death of Jesus. The beginning of the second error dates from the signature of a covenant or treaty by the second prince. So in the middle of the, the last seven years, the treaty to be violated by the suppression of the Jews religion and a time of persecution is to follow. All right, let me put this in a little picture here so we can understand it a little better. So the first error consists of 49 years and 434 years. This is the first error. The second error, according to uh, the, the book, his book, is the last seven years, and this is the second error. So when we look here, at the end, it ends with the cutting off of the Messiah, the death of Jesus. So right at the end of the very end year right here, this last year of this first error, that is when Jesus is crucified. And the beginning of the second error dates from the signature of a covenant. So this is the second error and uh, the signature uh, on a covenant or a contract occurs right at the beginning of this time period, according to him. So what are the prophetic key events for this 490 years? Well, number one, the beginning of the error, that's the command to restore uh, Jerusalem. Number two, the seven sevens, that's just 49 years. Number three, well, some people think there's a gap between these two, this, the first one and the second, but they never mentioned that there could be a gap up here also. So I just put that in here for reference, the seven year potential gap. Number four, the close of the first era. Remember I just mentioned this is where Jesus is crucified the very last year uh, at the end of the first era. Then the 62 sevens, the gap here. And then after 62 sevens, the 70th week, 
This is the red week here. And in the middle of the week, uh, something happens. So Sir Robert Anderson's events for this prophecy are as follows. He says the start of this prophecy is 14 March, 445 BC. Uh, he never mentions the 49 years as being anything significant, even though it's, uh, I think it's pretty significant in the Bible. Uh, he never mentions a gap here or that there could possibly be a gap or there's no, no significance given to this. At the close of the first era, he, he identifies 6 April 23 AD as the death of Jesus right here. And then he has the gap after the 62 years. And this is approximately 2,000 years uh, between the end of the first era to the, to the last seven years. And the beginning of the last seven years uh, is, of course, it does not, in his thinking, it does not follow, directly follow the 69th year. That's some 2,000 years in the future. And uh, in the middle of the week, this is still 2,000 years in the future. So these are the important ones. I want us to just focus in on this here. Couple of simple things. Let's focus in on the start of this prophecy, the 445 BC, March 14th, okay? And the close of the, the first era where Jesus is crucified according to his interpretation. So in the Julian calendar, that's what we use today. The Julian calendar is what we use. Of the 10th day of Nisan was Sunday, April uh, uh, 6, 6 April, AD 32. So what was the length of period in days intervening between the issuing of the decree to rebuild Jerusalem and the public advent of the Messiah, the Prince, between the 14 March BC 445 and April 6th? 32 AD. So this is uh, Sir Robert Anderson's uh, timing here. So this interval contains exactly to the very day 173,880 days or seven times 69 prophetic years of 360 days, the first 69 weeks of Gabriel's prophecy. Okay, let's take a look at this. So remember, we're, going, we're looking for exactly 173,880 days. Now here's where you're going to see a lot of numbers. So let's look at the quote here. Now, eight, 483 years, that's 69 times 7, of 360 days contains 173,880. What I've done here is I've got uh, uh, some spreadsheets where I have put the, the, uh, the various numbers here, and I'll show you what these are. It's not as complicated as it looks. This wiggly line here uh, is just because I couldn't show all 60 or all 70 weeks here. So I kind of squashed them down in the middle here. So I showed the beginning and the end. And in the middle, it's really not important for us to go and look at that in any, any degree. So let's look at what are these three different spreadsheets. Well, let's look at the one on the left here first. It starts with the year 445. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven years. So you can see as the years uh, uh, BC, they go down. 445, 444, 443, 42, 41, 40, 39. And so, <clears throat> so that goes all the way down, all the way through here. You notice it's 1 BC, 180, there is no zero year. And it goes down all the way down to uh, 45 BC. So this is just the 490 years, that they're just the years of the calendar right here, Julian calendar. Okay, this middle one here is also pretty simple, real simple. This just lists the 490 years by uh, a cumulative uh, addition here. So we got seven across the top again, 
this is the first year, second year, third year, fourth, etc. It goes over to the seventh. And so we wind this all the way down to the very last year of this prophecy, the 490th year. Okay, and this third uh, spreadsheet on the left here shows the actual days. So remember he said each year contains 360 days. Okay, so we got 360 and then another 360 at 720 and then a 1080, etc. So now we just keep accumulating down through here and you'll see over here in a second that gets us to 173,880. But if you go all the way down to the last 70th week to the very last year here, you can see it's 176, 400 days. All right. So what does all this prove? Well, let's take a look here. So now it says now eight, 483 years, that's 69 times seven. So this is the 69th year right over here. And this is 69 times seven. That puts us right here at the 483rd year. So this is, this, is, this is the year of importance for us. Now we're gonna go up here 360 days and we find that at the end of 69 years, or 69 weeks, the last year, we end up with 173,880 uh, years. Okay, so this is the, the years over here these are actual years, these are just cumulative years, and these are cumulative days. So this is where Sir Robert Anderson says that Jesus, on this very day, at the end of this period here, the very last day, is when Jesus rode into Jerusalem. And what was that year? If we look over here, that was A.D. 38. So you follow this, so that this, this year here must, must have been AD 38. So this interval contains exactly to the very day, 173,800 days, or seven times 69 prophetic years of 360 days, the first 69 weeks of Gabriel's prophecy. So this is right out of his book. And so this is what he's saying. On this last day, the 173,880, that day, that Sunday, is when Jesus rode into Jerusalem, and that occurred in 38 AD. We also find from uh, his book, he says the first error closes, that's the end of the 62 years, that's right here, with the cutting off the death of Jesus, of uh, Messiah. Uh, so Jesus is crucified right here. The beginning of the second era, the last seven years, dates from the signature of a covenant or treaty by the second prince. So we're not talking about the 69th year, we're talking about the uh, 69th week. We're talking about the 70th week here. And Jesus was crucified in, in uh, according to this an analysis in 38 AD. But let's read a couple other Bible texts. It says, now in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea. So Pontius Pilate, what was he? He was governor of Judea. Over in Matthew 27, two, it says, and when they had bound him, that's Jesus, they led Jesus away and delivered him unto Pontius Pilate, the governor. So we know that Jesus was delivered on the day he was crucified to Pontius Pilate, the governor. We read here in Wikipedia, but many other places, this is very common knowledge. Pontius Pilate was the Roman governor of the fifth uh, prefecture of the Roman province of Judea from AD 26 to 36. He served under Emperor Tiberius and is best known today for the trial and crucifixion of Jesus. So he served during this period of time. So Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea from AD 26 to 36. 
And we also know that Jesus was crucified when Pontius Pilate was governor. So those are two pretty solid facts that there's general agreement on. I want you to remember this. This is real important. So we're going to get back to this date here. So, what I'm saying is the math doesn't work. Well, what math doesn't work, Art? Pontius Pilate was governor from 26 to 36 only, and he most probably was dead in 38 AD. He wasn't the governor in 38 AD, but according to uh, Sir Robert Anderson's math here, Jesus was crucified in 38 AD. So this math doesn't work. It's bogus. Okay, well, let's continue here. So Sir Robert Anderson actually uses two different formulas to get to 173,880 days. So his first formula, which I just showed you, with the 69 weeks gets to 483 years, and 483 years times 360 gets to 173,880 days. So that's the first one. But his second formula is more complicated. So let's slowly go through this and make sure we understand that. So here we're going to take not 69 weeks, but we're going to take 68 weeks times 7 days per week equals 476 years. 476 years times the actual days in years. We know it's 365 days per year. So that gets you to 173, uh, 740 days. And then he adds in 24 days and 116 days to get to 116,880. So let me show you how he gets, gets to all this. So this is his second formula. But we already know something I just showed you, that the first formula doesn't work. So he goes to a second formula, and we'll see if this second formula works. So where does he get the second formula? Well, he says, but 700, 476 uh, days times 365 days a year is equals 173,740. Then he adds in 24 days for inclusive, because this didn't start, the decree started in March and ended in April. And then he adds in for leap year, so that's how he gets this. So let's go back to our handy dandy little uh, spreadsheet here. This is all the same except for one thing right here. I have 365 days per year instead of 360. And uh, of course this is 730 and etc. So we build this up along that way. So we have actual years here. So we're going to be using his formula here to figure out what this all means. So he starts off, he doesn't say that exactly, but he, to get to uh, 476, it's 68 weeks times seven, and that gets you the 476. So instead of being the, seven, the 69th week, he's back up to 68th week, and that's the, uh, he, that arrives at 173, 740. Then he starts adding the stuff in. So here's the, the first date the 476 uh, uh, years. So we go up and we use the formula with 365 days in, because we that's where that comes from his formula or his uh, writing. And that gets us down to 173,740. Well, we're not at that magic 173,880 yet. So how do we get there? Well, this date here has no leap years in it, so he adds in 116 leap years and 24 inclusive years, and that gets us to one, well, it doesn't get us exactly to 173,880, but it spills us out of this last uh, 68th week into the first uh, year of the 69th week. So during this 69th week, we'll run across this number, 173,880. 
It's actually 174, 105, but of course that's, that, that number is larger than 173. So it, that's at the end of this, this first uh, year. And from that, we go over here to 32 AD. But you'll notice that this 32 AD is at the beginning of the 69th week. And of course, he said it was at the end of the 69th week when Jesus was crucified. So the first era closes, that's the end of 62 years, with the cutting off the death of Jesus the Messiah. So there's a problem with this 32 AD. It doesn't work. Remember this little sketch here, the first error and the second error? What was this, the crucifixion occurred right here. And we prove that 38 AD was uh, a bogus year because uh, th that couldn't have happened. So the second formula, with the second formula, Jesus dies at the beginning of the 69th week. So could that be true? So according to Sir Robert Anderson's dual math formula, we have a choice. Jesus either died in the end of the 69th week, year 38, or at the beginning of the 69th week, year 32 AD. So even in his book, he has, has two different dates that he's actually uh, saying are the correct dates. And I don't believe he actually was able to figure this out like I've shown you here. He had some other way of figuring it out that I, I, I don't think it was correct. So his math just doesn't work out. It is incorrect. So all three references to the book of, of Robert Anderson, they all, all three preachers referenced it. And I've learned here from my studies, I don't believe there was any edict to rebuild Jerusalem in Nehemiah 2. There were just only a letter for safe passage, and there was a letter for timber from the king's forest. There is no biblical support for the start date or the end date of the 69 week, as he pr proposes in his uh, book. The uh, 173,880 days math doesn't work out at all with either, either formula. So we're gonna use his own criteria. It says the trustworthiness is tested and is, is uh, when we find a single glaring error, he says it may serve to discredit the testimony which seems of the highest worth. So I think, you know, Sir Robert Anderson probably meant the best. I'm sure he did. I had never obviously met the guy. He passed away before I was born. But uh, his evidence is not uh, conclusive. It's not, doesn't prove it. So I, I feel he had the best of motives in writing his book, but my conclusions are that his analysis does not hold up to today's close scrutiny. So unfortunately, 445 BC is proven false, and 173, 880 days is also proven false. So this whole thing of 445, the gap and the rapture, I believe is, is bogus. There's no 445 date. Jesus was not crucified in AD 32. There is no gap waiting for the future seven years and the rapture therefore is not true.